uh, I'm actually realizing it is right now as well that we are we are about to write history if we win against SKT and no one can take that away from us at all like in the whole future so I don't know it's I, I, I know I can't still can't believe it that we can make history Welcome back to Game 3 of SKT versus Misfits, where the EU representatives have become the first Western team now to take a game at Worlds off of SKT. They were previously 8-1 and one in quarterfinals and now 9-2 and two because of Misfits and taking that victory last game. Yeah, and now we're all super hyped regarding that last game, but we got to calm down a little bit because it's, it's a new game now. SKT can do exactly what Misfits did after the first game, just yeah. kind of reset, look at the draft once again, and could identify the Blitzcrank was a huge pick, obviously, for Ignat to keep creating these picks during the game, and Sidjuani as well for Max Lore. It is a little bit concerning, though, for SKT fans, because we talk so much about, well, SKT will fix all their problems for quarterfinals, they're so incredible at adaptation, and yes, it's not that they can't adapt within this series, but what they showed us last game was the same weaknesses that they had throughout the group stage when they got massively behind against EDG, drafting you know, a full late game, when they lost AHQ, drafting full late game. So this is something that SKT has been plagued by throughout the whole tournament. And it comes down to them drafting a lot of losing lanes in the draft, first of all, and then just bleeding objectives right. as well and just end up giving away kills they didn't need to and objectives they didn't have to. We get, do get blank in this game here. Of course, it was one of the fixes we saw in the group stages after the AHQ loss. But Peanut was playing, they put in blank right after, and he had a much better performance overall. He does add more consistency to SKT, and Peanut's not been showing up this series here, so I think it's a good good change. We also talk a lot about the ability that Blank has to kind of download the other team, to look at what the tendencies are, to craft a game plan side by side with Coma yeah. to be able to do that. And when you talk about what the game plan was for Misfits, it was all go bot lane. 30% jungle proximity for Han Sama. Blank should be playing around there. Yeah. He downloaded the Blitzcrank right there. <laughs> Told his coach, you should probably ban that one. It's pretty annoying to play against. It looks pretty good. Yeah, they, they, all, uh, they all seem to agree. So Blitzcrank <laughs> removed here. Ignar can still play Thresh. He plays a pretty mean Bard as well, if you want to go all kinds of crazy here. And there's still Rakan as an option for him, so there are plenty of engage uh, supports he can go for, supports that can add pick potential for his team. It's not just a Blitzcrank. Zaya is the final ban here from SK Telecom T1. Misfits Gaming decide to forego the Jace. The mage decide to still go with it. Yeah, you really want to ban Lulu here because Janna is banned on blue side, but you also want to ban the Jace. So it is a tough one for Misfits to decide which one to go for. Oh, it might go for a complete third pick and leave both open. And I was oh. going to say, you, you can actually leave the Lulu up because if you're trying to play full-on aggression, Lulu is a support that can be picked on. Yes, of course. If it you if you're not successful in your aggression, it's right. gonna really backfire and it's gonna look awful. But you can pick a thresh into a Lulu. Yes, you, you can. You can gank a Lulu time and time again with an aggressive jungler. That's something that is a big risk, but it makes sense with the win conditions that Misfits have. Lulu is so squishy in the early game. We took away some of her HP. She's rushing an Arden sensor. One hook onto her from a thresh, and you're most likely killing her, or at least forcing a flash. Yep. So that is definitely an option. I love the Tristana again. You need the tower pushing potential for Ansama because again, the goal is not just to kill the bot lane, it's also to take that tower as fast as possible. How else is it going to go forward? The question also <laughs> is, is now what are the answers to any potential Jace? They're going to grab the J4. This makes a lot of sense. Once again, you know, kind of indexing towards early game, someone who can get very involved, and especially if you want to go in preparation for that Thresh pick maybe later on. This is very strong early game jungle. And normally, again, we see teams go for jungle now and then AD carry. And that means the Jace could still be banned in the second phase by Misfits. But SKT already in the first game, they didn't pick early AD carry. They exactly. saved it for later. They had the Caden pick. There's enough AD carries available for them to play that they were okay kind of sacrificing bang at least a little bit in the pick and ban phase. And that's why you have to take it in consideration against this team because they've shown the ability to do that. They show that they weren't actually you know, really harmed by it as well. So now big decisions and it is going to be the Jace. It will be the AD carry pushed down to the next round. And now for Misfits, it's, well, do you try to draft something that's strong in a Jace right now? Or do you grab your support? Because there's the ability to actually target the top lane if you do a standard support pick here. You also can uh, theoretically flex that J4 up to the top side. And it's actually going to be neither of those. So this may be a top Jarvan. We still have to take that in consideration. Power of Evil and the team enjoying that lock in, and they will get themselves the Orianna. We see the Jace, as we said, being locked in. Ken Flex, Blank decides to go for the Gragas. 
as we see what's going to happen here in the second ban phase. Misfits to ban now. And Oriana really is the number one pick for Power B. It's been the number one pick for him for so many years now in the EULCS. And of course, Faker loves to take it as well for himself, especially if he needs to blind pick anything. Yep. But it is on Power Weaver for now. Something we also have to keep in mind here is if Faker wants to be influencing the side lanes, as he did in game number one, Talia is still on the table here. And Talia, I think, is a fine matchup into Orianna. You can get out into those side lanes, help to try to snowball a Jace. And yeah. that's something that we're going to have to see Misfits at least be taking into consideration. And it could be a pick he's been practicing on. It's never that successful for him in the LCK itself. And it's always been more about Crown and BDD and these guys. But again, you never know because you're coming into the playoffs. Of course, you could have spent the entire week just practicing Talia only yep. to have it ready for this game. And I'm always going to give Faker the credit <laughs> that he can play any champion in the game. And despite the fact that there are multiple support bans on the playmakers, Rakan is still available. Yes. So they're targeting more Ignar as a player rather than actually, you know, the support champion. Oh! oh my god, the Leona, this makes so much sense. Going into the Lulu, we talk about champions that can pick on Lulu in the early game. We talked about Thresh, we talked about Blitz, we did not talk about the Leona. Ah, shame on us! <laughs> this is. This is a pick. I mean, this is something you talk about uh, last year. Misfortune coming out and changing a series. This could be that for this year. And Bang is again looking at one of the scaling AD carries that can't what? roll an Is he a Bane now? Okay, Bane into Leona. If you are incredible, you can actually buffer your Condemn and knock back the Zenith yes. Blade from Leona, making it very ineffective. But you cannot mess up that, that at all. And again, you're picking Vayne right now. We know how little you're Lulu going to mid. offer in the early Perhaps. game. Yeah, there is a chance of moving Lulu to mid here, but it would be a surprise because Lulu has not been used in right. a long time. And there's Talia. that Talia you mentioned, Azale, like, Faker, been practicing yeah. it. Want to have it ready for this game. Yep. It's it's the best player to ever play the game. You're going to give him the credit that he can play a meta champion in the mid lane. And Talia, again, is going to be someone who can get out to the side lanes. We have to see, is now this going to be a Jarvan top or is it a Jarvan jungle? The last pick will be deciding the rest of the draft. But either way, you're going to have to take into consideration the early roam power Iver. from the Talia. So this is a Jarvan top. And Misfits have, have <laughs> crafted a pretty insane draft. They still want to have the Arden sensor yes. win condition for the Tristana. So great. You're Please. saying you have this aggressive bot lane. You get super ahead. Then you have the Arden sensor, the shields on your AD carry yeah. with the Orianna and the Ivern, and you try to push turrets. And I want to see Fager's performance as well with Talia, because he's going to be so important when it comes to protecting his sides. Kept trying to pick it over and over during the summer's play, but never again to me stood out as one of those really epic Talia players that you always have to respect and ban it away from. But I'm glad to see him go back to basically his most big champion actually during the summer's play itself. And I want to see him carry now on this champion, because Korean Talia's are just another level. I mean, Talia has just been smashing it in this tournament. Almost a 73% win rate here at Worlds for players on Talia. Has been such a pivotal pick, but really it's kind of crazy we're talking so little about the vein when the vein is locked in. It, it's almost, you know, taking Who's it first to all these other picks that are happening. You know, the Ivern, the Leona, the Talia for Faker, so much happening in this draft. And I feel like SKT will have to execute to perfection with a comp like this, because while yes, there is the ability for a Jace and a Vayne in the side lanes being supported by the Talia completely taking over. One misstep on those sort of champions, yep. you get put behind. And when a Vayne is behind a Tristana, good luck holding your turrets. Good luck indeed. We see both teams now bringing out their own comps, their own styles. Misfits feeling their own game here on the world's quarterfinal stage against the world champs. We are in game three. It is one to one as we see who can take this third match. Something insane here. Ignar is actually going fervor of battle on Leona. This is 100% for the early game. He's going to stack it very quickly with the spells and indexing so heavily for the early damage. It's not a Thunderlords. This is very, very interesting. We're going to have to see if it pays off because he's going to be much squishier as a result without actually having that tank mastery. But for Ignar, it's all about just killing people right in front of him. And if he's going first and there's an Ivern there, there's a Tristana. They have the damage, at least with Hansama in the early game, to kill something like a Lulu that's so, so squishy. Max Law's job here is build Arden Sensor and then be ready to babysit his bot lane. Because with this Ivern, your first clear is not great. You drop very low from it. But once you go back to base and return out on the map, you can start kind of outpacing the enemy jungler and really be active in lanes. You really can, but for Blank, 
he has seen what the strategies have been. And again, it does look like a case where you want to go to the bot lane. But Blank is going to be torn between both these side lanes, which can be extremely successful, but also very vulnerable when put behind. I mean, when you look to the top side, Jarvan plus the Ivern is certainly a duo that could take down a Jace who's pushing too far up. And likewise, Bang and Wolf will have to play this early game exceptionally careful. Just a cut of 50 damage off of Blank's health as they make their way into the jungle. Send a blade first. Sunlight passive damage as well as something you have to watch Ooh. from Leona in the early game. It can easily put you in a bad situation as SKT is trying to disrupt quite a bit. Yeah, I love the start here. Bot lane. Okay, Sama keeping that W on the ready as he jumps in for Bang and a little bit of damage, but they lose that trade. Yeah, actually really bad start for Misfits here. Flash already forced on Power of Evil. Blank is pushing Maxlor off of his jungle camps, and the bot lane took a pretty rough trade here. And yeah. Leona from behind is actually abysmal. You need to be able to go aggressive, or you can't do anything. Well, they try to get to the front already. Ignite goes down immediately. No flash forward, but the heal comes out. They turn to Wolf as Bang feels like he can get back into the fight. Just 158. Hansama has no heal. Hansama. One more shot as Wolf wants the glitter lands. Bang on the way back. The barrier comes back. And again. will not back down there on the match though faker is moving up but they have killed both the bot lane in 2v2 blank is level one he's gonna get pushed out of the jungle and yeah. maxlor gets his red buff misfits get everything all the focus was on the bottom lane while the junglers were trying to fight up top here mid laners were in their top laners as well early on maxlor is level two now blank is back in base zero cs so far for him has to now go out and take his first camp and Bang dies with three CS. This is a pickaxe to nothing. Ignar is able to get a good early buy here as well. They will need to keep up the pressure. We'll see if SKT can stabilize because honestly, this has been such a devastating early game after what they just faced in game number two. And I wanted to talk about why Hansama jumped in level one and was so aggressive instantly. One of the things he's doing is he runs HP region runes and also with the Dawn Shield. So he had 24 HP region per five at level one compared to seven on Bang. So he jumps in, he wants early trades, he wants to get the region in his favor. Ends up then having another fight a little bit later where suddenly it looks like Hansama is actually dying, but because then a fervor of battle on Ignar, he has the damage to kill the Bane. And remember, with that Ignite cooldown, that is gonna be up before yes. you know, the flashes are up, right? So when Ignar gets that Ignite back, they are level three, they have the ability to go Let's for the go. Let's watch the play one more time. They're getting chased down, they know they need to turn, and as Bang is pushed out, Misfits are handling this exceptionally well, and Leona is actually getting so much damage out yes. with the fully stacked Fervor, mind you, even through the shield. Look how much damage that auto did. I mean, it's completely surprising Bang with the DPS coming level one from Ignar here, and then Hansama gets his HP back, returns into the fight, Flash. picks up a kill for himself. I mean, who accounts for an eight stack Fervor, Leona, <laughs> in, a, in a level one all in? I mean, it's insane. Listen. Everyone always says, oh, oh here they go. Right and Wolf gets hit, they're right onto him. Here comes Max Lord 2 to get a piece of the party. He gets the chance to get in with the shield. And now the assists are going across the map. Most teams in the world try to copy LCK. They try and play like the Korean teams. They never get to their level, so they can't take them down in these best of five series. Misfits are saying, we don't care about the meta. We don't care about how you play in LCK. They're switching it up completely. So bang, completely unexpected. A fervor battle, Leon Leona kills him at level one. And I mean, like I said, as a vein from behind, good luck clearing the waves against this. Tristana is going to be pushing it. They're looking to fight again, but maybe too far. Under the turret, condemned, and that's going to be Ignar going down. They're still going to trade on the Bang. Bang cannot get into the fight, but neither can Han Sama or Max Lord. They back up, and they have to watch out for Faker. Yeah, Faker's moving down. He's not level six just yet. Still what trying to get there in time. Too. They actually zoned them off so much farm as well, but. Han Sama, no summoners. Looks like they are gonna get taken out. He could have the rocket jump as he comes back. He's trying to go for the kill, however, and he keeps Faker from getting an assist on that one. Nicely played. It is gonna be Power of Evil just on the edge of Maxlor. Shield and Dissonance to get out. No, just the shield, as he would've wanted the Dissonance for power. Really nice roam there from Faker, getting down to the bot side, calming things down for SKT. So big that they get those two kills back and start to stabilize the game a little bit here. But still, it's Hansama with three kills. 
BF pickaxe to a couple Doran's blades and a dagger. I mean, I love, they're proxying so early in the game just behind the tower here. But because Ignar is onto the body slam to Gragas, he gets pulled onto that turret and then knocked further back in. They're still trading one for one. And now it's all about just Faker moving first from that mid lane. Power people not able to follow him instantly. And this is why SKD can actually bounce back with a few kills. Not a whole lot Hansama or Maxwell can do here. No, so. certainly not. They, they were completely corralled. And, and Faker now is going to be level 6 when we get back into live. And they're going to have to really play around that because these roams will be that much easier for him yeah. to pull off. And we said last game as well, it was good that Misfits in these fights, approaching the turret, always getting damage on the turret, always setting up for the next move. Once they break it and the map opened up for them, they took control of the corner. And while the Vayne is in this game as a counter to the Leona, Vayne still has all the normal issues for her. Again, she can't push out waves properly. She needs a lot of time before she gets really strong in the game. Maxwell might get caught out here. Root callers in, that's not gonna be there for Power of Evil, however, and they don't currently have the vision on Faker. Now Fari takes a shot, blast, power up, gets the flag and drag out to safety. Ignar going in, Sunlight and Root onto Bang. It doesn't look like Hansama can follow up as they were just a little mismatched on their targets, but still winning the trade. Again though, that's all the summoners down for Bang. The exhaust is gone for Wolf, and Ignar is going to be level six here relatively soon. That level six all in is so exceptionally strong from the Leona, and Bang needs to be careful. Right now, Bang's condemned to knock the Leona back. He's on a 20 second cooldown. Leona's E herself to actually try and get in is on a 13 second cooldown. So you can play around the CD or the cooldown here on both these abilities. And it's also why you saw Ignar start off that play with a flash Q. He didn't want to allow him a chance to actually make that happen. You can simply save the Zenith Blade for follow up damage later on. Again, we see Moby Boots Max Lore headed towards the bot side to make sure things are safe as Misfits take that vision control across the map. This is what we talked about before here. Max Lore just wants to get one early rotation of his jungle camps and then go down to this bot lane. It's the second time he's here already. Eight minutes into the game, they take down the tower. That's exactly why they have this Ivern to babysit the bot lane and build that out and sensor. And they just has so little wave clear, 480 carries in this meta. Yes, you could try to rush towards something like a Shiv to help with that a little bit, but Vayne is always really going to struggle to actually clear waves against this pushing style. And now we can see Misfits send their bot lane up to top where, honestly, Alfari is getting abused by Huni and this turret is getting low. But if you can put the dual lane and match up against the Jace, that takes away a lot of the pressure that Jace has. Misfits here putting value on getting more turrets down instead of securing a Mountain Drake in the early game. Instantly swap to top side. We have to remember this ult here from Ignar. It's fairly landed on things like a Lulu. You can land it on Talia as well if she's not getting a bit of extra movement speed. Same thing for Huni actually if he's just standing in the middle of the lane. And Ignar is already up here. Flashes left and right across the map from this Misfits pressure is putting SKT at a deficit already. Yeah, just a nice roam up from Power of Evil. Maxor coming down. That forces the flash there out of Huni, and now he has to be worried about any potential dive. So SKT is moving multiple members up here, and they're sending Bang to actually split push down on the bottom. Huni should have been ready for that little swap, though, after the bottom tower had already died. You always got to be ready for the enemy duel lane to show up in your lane. In fact, you lose the flash, it could be huge. Ignite's level six now. Hansama taking quite a bit of damage as he steps forward. He actually would have found quite a few members of SKT on the other side of that fight. Looks like Faker stays mid lane to farm. As we said, the lanes have swapped, but now Afari's in that bot lane with Bang. A little mismatch. It's also looking like PoE is going to be going towards Aroa here. So likely going to be the Aroa Nasher's build that he has kind of made famous, I guess. Could also be the Rod of Ages, it's just Morello uh, for, for, for Power of Evil. I don't feel like there's a lot of frontline tanks. He's yeah. auto attacking in this game. It's just blank only. That's true. When you question him about it, he says, it's the fights I can stay in for a long time. Auto attacking, charging up. This doesn't seem to be one of those, but he has the method to his madness. Again, remember, we'll there's out. no flash on Huni's side, and Ignar is level six. Huni wants to try and surprise Hansama here. They're going to find him. He rolled just on the other side. Hansama taking a big hit there. Is the teleport now coming in from Alfari? And that's Huni going down a little too strong. Cataclysm on to Wolf. Does Hansama pick up another one? Alfari grabs that for himself. Grab two kills there. They're going to push the turret. There's no one up here to answer. This should be another Misfits turret. They are making it happen. This gold lead is getting enormous blank. Looking for the play. Maxlord takes a hit. Cast back. This one's going to be in the hands of Faker oh. as they make quick work of the mid lane. But top's being taken down. Misfits is winning across the map. Credit to SKT. That was a beautiful combo there. The oh, cast into in. the flip. And they're trying to hold top side here as well. Huni is Pressure. back. And the Roma's coming up. 
Faker has ultimate. Bit more damage on the serrated Dirk, stacking up his tier now. These guys went Dorans in the bot lane and top lane first to hopefully be able to farm up, hopefully have a little bit more HP, and it set them back just a bit. All right, let's see the replay again. Huni lost his flash earlier because he did not respect the lane swap from Misfit. That means now it's very easy for Ignar to actually just stun lock him and take him down in time. And Avar just instantly TPs into this top lane here to get a kill on Wolf. Wolf wasn't even six there. It, it, what, was he going to do more than shield? But great play here for SKT to react on something top side. Mid was not paying attention. And then just, just look at the combo here. This is so perfect from Blank and Faker. Look at that. The cast perfectly into the flip. No gap in between that, so no chance for Maxler to actually get away. And had his flash available. It's important that Faker doesn't get too many kills for Misfits here. They want to get more. Huni still no flash. Nice ultimate. Solar Flare into the Zenith Blade. Daybreak lockdown, and that's Han Sama coming up with another kill. Ignar putting these on a silver platter. That's what we talked about earlier here. Lulu, Talia, Jace, these kind of champions without dashes, you can land that Leona ulti onto them if there's no flash. Ignar is showing no fear, playing against SK Telecom, T1. He is full aggression, he is not backing down. And this is a legend in the making. Ignar is playing out of his mind. They get to taunt SKT in their own jungle now. Explosive shot takes Blank down below half health. Ignar is going to be the first one to take the turret shot with Daybreak Aggro. And they're going to be able to walk out with another kill. Faker with the Weaver's Wall not able to make any moves or block the fight off. Comes in just a little late. And we keep seeing Misfits make plays around the duel in here because Ignar and Sama are playing so well. Faker trying to help his team. He's trying to defend them on both sides, but he can't get there in time. And meanwhile, in the bot lane, we see some of the problems for Vayne. She takes forever to do anything, push a lane, get her items. It all takes too long. Yeah, and I mean, when you give six kills and an early turret with Rasana, the gold lead is enormous for Han Sama. He is 2,600 gold ahead of his opponent right now in his early stages of the game. He's going to be on two items, likely before you know, Bang has really anything happening over on his side. And Bang wants to rush that rage play, the same thing we saw from Uzi when he played the vein earlier here during Worlds. Top lane, Huni once again plagued by losing that flash to a lane swap he should have seen coming. Ends up going down, and Hansama picks up another easy kill. And this is just brilliant from Misfits, because not only are you getting Hansama stronger and stronger and stronger, you've now gotten Huni out of this matchup against Alfari. Alfari is being given time to farm. That is almost equalized. He was massively behind earlier in the game, but Huni cannot match up to this fed Tristana with the support of that Leona. So now this top lane tower should be an easy objective here for Misfits. They didn't have to look at Rift Held and mid lane tower after. Get Faker pushed far back on the map so he can't impact the side lanes with his ult because, again, at the moment, Faker is trying his best to actually apply pressure and still try and defend his losing side lanes. Top lane getting pushed on Sama. Solo gold for himself as well. Absolutely huge. 6.6 .6 to Bang's 4,000 gold right now. And you can see it in the items. They certainly can. But one bright spot for SKT has been Faker. He is strong, but they're going for the engage again. To do the kill. Easy hit onto Blank. Like the synergy there. When you land the snare from Max Law, Ignar can just go straight into melee range and then apply his own stun. It's a good synergy between Ivan and Leona. Yeah, they're gonna go straight in, try to get some damage down on this turret, but he can retreat back to the Rift Herald, which is available. I think that may be the option here for Misfits, and things are looking so, so good for them. So effectively right now, if you're SKT, if you get hit by one skill shot that applies any sort of CC, you're most likely dying, or you have to at least blow your flash. Because look at this here. As soon as Max Lord connects the snare onto Blank, Ignar can get into melee range, being pulled in, and instantly he can just apply a stun. There's no chance for Blank to really escape as soon as the snare hits. Yeah, and then it's the perfect CC combo there. The Q to follow up the route into your own ultimate, into the shockwave. There's so much CC, and Han Sama, this is the dream game for him. Already tied against SKT in the quarterfinals. Seven kills to his name at 15 minutes on this Tristana. He has the support of the Ivern. He has the support of the Orianna, and he has been set up perfectly to carry this game. Yes, two fully completed items, tier two boots as well, and the enemy AD carry is just going back now to get his first. Don't worry, he just bought his blasting one, so now he's- Ah, there we go. <laughs>
And if you, is there any question to where Misfits is playing around? 100% kill participation from both bot lane members. They've been involved in everything and they are creating everything. Exactly. And, and while Hansam has played incredible, not to take away from him, Ignar has been the catalyst. Absolutely. In these last two games, the Blitzcrank, now the Leona, these incredible picks coming out from him have to be executed perfectly or they fall apart completely. They look horrible. Right. Instead, he's been able to execute flawlessly in these games, even bringing out innovations like the fervor of battle on this Leona. And this is just a series to remember already. And we had teams looking at this bot lane meta of the, the Lulu Caitlyn's and the Relic Shield Lady Carries, and they said, okay, Caitlyn is the answer. Misfits are saying, no, 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 no. You gotta move right. to support. That's where you find the answer. You gotta find some way of creating picks force fights against these very passive lanes. It's a vain Lulu lane. They're never gonna do anything in the early game and they're getting destroyed. And this is step two now. Take over your enemy's jungle. You had the Blitzcrank, vision control powerful with that. Likewise, it is with the Leona. You cannot face check into this team because the damage will be there from Han Salma to burn you down if you get hit by any of that crowd control. Mountain Drake now picked up by Misfits as they reset the map a bit, find out where they're going to to go next. The map is objective free. We won't see Baron for another three minutes. And SKT loves to use these windows. But now, of course, with the Rift held here, you have to start looking at either one of these side lane turrets if they get a kill to secure a tier two one, or you want to get the mid lane tower, ideally, yep. away from Faker. But he's sitting there nonstop just wave clearing, trying to make sure Misfits can't get the tower too fast, because the longer that tower is alive, the longer SKT can actually defend and try and delay the game. Because at this point, all they can hope for is go full late game with this Vayne here. Yeah, and honestly, you know, while Vayne is a great scaling champion, it can be so difficult to actually navigate the team fights when there's so much CC. If you get hit by anything, you're going to get burst down. It's so difficult to actually match up against Sersana, who has longer range and all this crowd control, people diving you. It feels like a game where Jace and the Vayne have to be in opposite lanes. You have to be split pushing and you have to be able to be ahead to actually effectively do that oftentimes. Exactly, and at this point, you're seeing as the Vayne couldn't do anything in the laning phase, you could have gone for different AD carry choices, which would have had the same result in the early game, but much easier to play in the late game fights. And I'm looking at a Twitch from Bang that he's used to come back in games doing group stages so often already where he needs one good team fight and he takes two or three members down and shock him in the mid lane. The Faker, it's gonna be Max Lord just behind him. They flash in for the root caller. Here's Daisy and Faker's forced to flash over the wall as Wolf is still there for wild growth protection. Again, Misfits are trying to force Faker away from mid so they can get this tier one tower down. Yeah, and they should be able to. Ignar is here. He's gonna drop the Rift Herald. Han Sama is coming up as well. Push Faker out, both summoners down, and now Faker cannot reliably wave there because the threat of a dive is so high. Weaver's Wall oh, in the, the Rift the Herald. Herald. 2,000 IQ Weaver's Wall. And it looks like they're gonna be able to get that taken down as Rift Herald just squeezes through. Nine to four here, and mid turret has the pressure of Shelly. And that ult was so close to catching Faker. He got hit by the slow, not the stun. Had it fully connected, that would likely be a dead Faker. We might have to see Wolf get an early Mikhails in this game here to try and help his team out because at the moment, there's no cleanse on Fager's mid lane here. There's obviously no cleanse on Bang's AD carry either. So they, if they get hit by again, that one CC, so much more will follow and they're not going to leave this fight alive then, they will die. One of the nicest things about this game as well for Ansami, he's so much gold and really, there's no armor on the other team. You don't have to go back for a Last Whisper. You don't have to do that at all. You can go straight to this double a shift type item. You have the Energizer build. You can punch through anyone who gets crowd control. Another thing to note here is that Wolf went with Spell Thieves for the early laning phase to try and make sure they didn't lose too hard and it's prevented him from getting the same amount of gold as we see from the coin build. So he's actually not currently sitting there and just rushing towards two or three items as we've seen so often from these supports. He's only completed the Arch Center at this point with 20 minutes into the game. He is so far behind. Yeah, I mean, he's actually gotten 500 less gold than even the Targon's item for Ignar. So really has not been able to actually use that item effectively because when you are behind, when you are pushed down, it's hard to move up and actually proc that Spell Thieves. You have to sit back so he doesn't even have the quest completed. Can't proc it when you're dead. And that's what <laughs> Wolf are realizing. Now, here's my question, guys. Usually, it's going to be, how does Misfits find the way into the fight? But how does SKT find a hole in Misfits' composition at this point? 
I think it's slip push. I think that's really your only way to win. Unless Misfits make some sort of misposition and Blank can find a perfect ultimate and split them up. I feel like this team fight is just so much better for Misfits in a 5v5 than it is from SKT with the front line, with double shielding, with Shockwave as well from Power of Evil and a super fed AD carry. And there's no flash on Fega at the moment. So if he steps forward, Ignar will just ult straight in his face and try and take down this Talia instantly. I like to play around Baron to force SKT to constantly react. Now they need to force the fight. They need to start it because Jace is not coming and they need to force a teleport out at the very least. But they're rushing this down very fast. Look for the turn here from Ignar's side. He wants Faker. They use the brush. Great ball control from Power of Evil. They go right on to Blank. They're going to be out with Daisy as well. Blank's able to get out with a shield and they take Afari is down Alfari immediately. Misfits making a misstep and they will have to back off from Baron. Right there, Ignar missed everything on the Talia. That was the target he was looking for. No flash and if you want to clean this snowball the game, then you have to hit this one. It was a good play to start the Baron and then turn, but the execution failed. And even if they had fully committed to Blank, Blank very likely would not have been able to escape with the CC landing on him. They went for the big target. It does flop, and this buys SKT a lot of time. It gets them some gold. They knock down another turret, and they do hold on to this game. One of the big things for SKT when they are defending is look for mistakes from the enemy team. Right. Try and punish those mistakes to delay the game. They had one right, right here. back to it. Misfits are starting it again. Leona ulti is ready in just about 10 to 15 seconds. They really want to force out the teleport here from Hooney. He is TPing in just now, but Vayne is so far away, and they may actually just be able to go for a finish. Blank has come, though. Baker was already bought. Bang committed to the red. They said if Blank can get there, we can stall it. And they are going to be able to, but this is still Misfits trying to walk F or Faker and uh, SKT around the map, not let them get control. And a little bit too fast here for Misfits buying into the hype. There was no ulti for Ignar while they were on the Baron. They needed that cooldown ready. Also didn't want to risk Blank stealing that Baron away right. from them and once again slowing down the game. Still, I will say, I think the play came out well for them. The trade of teleports, I think, is actually positive for Misfits because I don't feel like Hooney can actually afford to be in a side lane now with the threat of engage from Alfari when he is grouped. And Jace wants to be in that side lane. Ignat thought he hit the snare, so he just put the ulti in the same spot to chain CC Faker. But Faker sidestepped the first one and, of course, sidestepped the next one. And Faker is in a position where he is the hope for his team, the biggest hope for his team right now. 3-0-0, having a strong game for himself and has found him in himself in positions like this time and time again throughout the years where he's been able to pull it back. And one of the big notes when we see teams get ahead against SKT is that they need to keep being aggressive. They can't start slowing down. The moment you slow down and delay the game, you give SKT a chance to find the side lanes and get two to three items and they can start team fighting you. Misfits are trying to continue this forcing place. They had two Baron plays, got into Furnace Drake now, looking for something around mid. I mean, with three items done on your AD carry, they should be forcing the fight. And Huni has been forced into grouping. SKT is going to have to play this kind of guerrilla warfare style where they're off to the side. They're trying to clear out the waves and deny Misfits the ability to go forward and push. For the next fight, there is flashes available on all the different members that can't, that can't actually dodge a Leona all too easily. And I'm looking at the Lulu, Talia, and the Jace once again. And that's where Leona can start to really kind of fall flat because Lulu has such a high baseline of effectiveness when you're applying these shields, when you're speeding up your AD carry. You will always have value in a fight if you are not dying right off the bat, whereas the Leona needs to nail the CC chain or she is adding almost nothing. Need to get that righteous glory as well. Add even more engage here for Misfits. Keep jumping at SKT. Next step for them though, seeing as Drake is dead, is Reclaim the barren area. Get your control wards down. Get your vision once again. I've got to point out the Nasher's Tooth from PoE. I know it's been talked to about time and time again, but there's just doesn't feel like the game for it. When there's not frontliners, you can consistently auto attack. It feels like the Morellos would be the more effective choice, but we're going to have to track and see how well he can make it work. Yeah, there's also a chance he values it very much for the auto attack damage on things like Baron and a turret as well to keep True. snowballing in the game. It's only 20 less AP than the Morello for him at, this, at the moment, so getting the attack speed could be valuable. Bang Lao well with a Knight's Vow from Blank. He'll be able to get a little added stats from that, as well as those shields coming in from Wolf. SKT setting up their fight just a little bit. On to Huni! They break onto Huni. That's Han Sama over the wall, but he gets the hit out, which doesn't allow for the quick Zenith Blade from Ignar. That was one flash now, but the ulti's on cooldown from Ignar's side. 
not ranked two just yet, and at the moment he's waiting another minute. Well, Ignar, has to be careful here, all of SKT has come. Ignar still pretty tanky with that W on, but when a five-man brawl, he goes down fast. Han Sama trying to fire in on Bang from the other side. Maxor throws out Daisy, thinking that would continue. And again, we're starting to see these small mistakes here from Misfits, where SKT are so good at finding the little opening and then just punish it instantly. They invested time to try and kill Huni. He flashed away, and then Ignar kind of losing grasp of the mid lane, where his team did not actually have any priority and ends up dying. Yeah, exactly. Power of Evil is up on the top side of the map. He does not have his ultimate. They're not looking for a fight. And if you're not grouped up as that five-man squad, you can't be wandering around when SKT is not on the map, when you don't have the vision to allow you to do so. But still, they're trying so hard to force these fights because they know how massive the advantage they have is at this stage. I mean, still, even with the second item completed for Bang, Hansom is hilariously Yeah, out. exactly. They can just go back to Baron, set up their control wards, and when SKT walks in to fight them, just kill Blank. Like, you don't even have to get to the back line. This is a Gragas with just a Knight's Vow and a Cinder Hulk as his defensive tools. This Tristana will take him down very quickly. Yeah, but they have not been able to do it, and Huni's teleport is back up, which means he's going to be in the side lanes, pressuring turrets. Now it's the time then for Misfits there, trying to take over control here. Need a control ward. Ideally also in the Baron pit to see if anything has been put in behind, or at least sweep the Baron area from Maxlaw here with this Ivern. And then push your top lane, push your mid lane, and start taking or making sure that SKT can't see anything in the river. So when SKT are trying to go in and stop you, it's blank face checking, and he kind of delivers himself to you, and you can kill him. Now they have the vision control. They've swept out the wards around. They can threaten to start up this Baron, and Blank is going to have to try to get vision control. We'll see if Misfits can navigate this Baron dance effectively, because I do feel if you can secure a Baron with the position that they're in yeah. at this stage, and denies completely the split push priority from SKT, and then we forced to fight you and very likely lose the game. So right now, after we had the first wave of vision, Misfits reset to restock here on control wards. This is now the time for SKT to go into the river and try and kill whatever wards they can. But by the time they've killed them, Misfits are right back out on the map and can place new ones in case anyone even died. And they regain control for another few minutes of the Baron area. And those few minutes, that's where Misfits needs to strike. And because they were so scared, they didn't have vision on those people going back to base. They didn't have the confidence to go in. But Huni is on the bot side. I feel like Misfits needs to start something. You can't Hearing allow it. Jace to tear you apart. They can Blast Cone over as well, but this ward is actually very smart from SKT to see if the Blast Cone is being used into the Baron pit. So they know the Baron is stuck. Blank is maybe too far. They Blank can actually is just way too far it's away. This is Baron. Baron for Misfits. Oh. Going to be the fight. Ignar could get pushed away. No condemn there. Three silver bolts coming through. Blank says we can still fight this. Let's go, team. That's going to be the redemption. Oh, Tash out a huge shockwave on the three members of SKT. But Huni's already teleported into the back line. That war behind Baron was his in, and it's also his out. Finger doing what he can to bring the pain from the side, but SKT has been pushed out by power of evil. Three for one, and the Baron for Misfits, despite on someone jumping in a bit too far. He does get taken down, but SKT have to commit so much to that kill that they had nothing left. And Misfits will be out on the map with a Baron buff and a chance to put SKT one game away from elimination. After Misfits just slowed down a little bit and got their vision back around the Baron, they could keep baiting around it. SKT had to go back and reset, get their own wards as well, and then Misfits strike. And even with the ward behind the pit to spot the Blast Cone, they can't react in time. Ignar jumps away here, Hansama gets hit by the body slam engage from Blank, and that's why he's not able to deal enough damage in the fight here. Great shockwave though from Power of Evil. Another carry just steps up, and of course Alfari takes the kill. Yeah, completely fight saving shockwave there as everyone piled in on Hansama. He used his rocket jump very aggressively <laughs> and did go down, but makes them pay for it. And he's at such a strong point. And look at the damage put out there from PoE. So, so effective with that shockwave. Shockwave dissonance, hardly got any autos in. I'm seeing the effectiveness. I'm seeing. <laughs> hey, he rushed down the barrel with it, and it's worked out so Absolutely. far for him, and Boy, he's he very comfortable well. with it. Yeah, that's why he's going for the item in this game here. It is still only 20 less AP. So right. It's not a huge downgrade for him in terms of his actual damage, and Void Staff now completed. Huni is trying to be annoying in a side lane, but the rest of Misfits, they don't care. They're much stronger in the four-man group. And Alfari should never take a fight against Huni. All he needs to do is hold the turrets, play defensive. You don't need to be the hero in that 1v1. You need to hold him even. This is where, you know, when Cloud9 were playing this sort of a comp against SKT, they fell flat because Huni was able to get a solo kill on impact and delay the game.
And we have no flash on the bot lane from SKT. Misfits can actually threat to this tower dive if they can instantly burst down walls. That's why you see SKT stay so far back. Just give up the tower here. Try and see if you can delay Misfits from getting an inhib with this Baron buff here. Meanwhile, Huni is trying to go super aggressive in the top lane and get some towers for his team. See if Misfits can act on the bottom side. Baron still with a minute and a half left, but they are waiting on a minion wave. This gives Huni time to back up and be somewhere else. Teleports are still down for both of those top laners, so it will be a 4v4 on the bot side if they choose to. And you have to feel that this is for sure the Misfits turret. I don't Whoa. think SCT will fight for that. The question is, how aggressive does Misfits go with this? Do they take the gold that they have gone, or do they push for the Baron? I feel like you really want to push aggressively. Baker can use the defensive wall here to try and Force them away from the turret, and that's what he's actually going for. When he got back, then I don't know if Alfari knew it, he's gonna start rotating down. When he can join the fight, just because Yeah, this is gonna be a 5v4. Alfari's not here. Misfits need to get out. Weaver's wall came in from the side. That's the redemption down, so they can kind of get a bit of play in now. Get that heal back in, and Faker waiting to engage on that side. Gets a good flick onto Power of Evil. Shock Blast comes through. Just another hit, and they take down POE. And it's still Faker trying to defend here for SKT. He hides around the corner. Great knockback on the Orianna. We had some of the burst here from this Talia. And he's been doing his job in this game here. Faker himself. The rest of the team, that's where we're seeing them fall apart. Blank has been trying to assist Faker as much as possible, but he's still being a, tar a target as well. He certainly has it. And Misfits, you need oh. to play this a little bit more slowly. Allow time for Jarvin to get up to the turret, to draw someone over there, and then know that you will be able to take a 4v4 when you have the proper vision. Instead, getting a little bit antsy, Faker catches PoE, and as he always seems to, gives his team another lease on life. Yeah, 4 0 2 for him on this Talia pick. A little quiet in the early game, but now he starts to go off. Flash was used in that play, keep himself safe. Let's take stock of where the game is at. 32 minutes in, Han Sama had such a great bot lane, now on four items. The Bloodthirst is being one of those. Flash. He feels like he can go straight in. He meets Bang face to face as well. A 2v1 situation, oh. and Han Sama comes out on top, two summoners down. Well, trying to go aggressive there to be the hero, to kill Faker, and then make sure his team can actually get and in here, but this time around, SKT stay alive, and his two summoners down from Tristana. Still no flash for Faker. If there is a fight, Ignar can try and target him. Yeah, and I mean, Blank, though, can look for Han Sama, catch him with his own flash. Bang has his flash up, so there is the ability to target Han Sama. He needs to play safe enough, survive in these fights. There's so little gold right now on Wolf here with his Lulu. He actually just sold his Spell Thief and said, I need some sort of gold income here and picked up a coin instead. Because at the moment, with 34 minutes or 33 minutes into the game, not sure why I stopped right there, didn't really matter if it was a minute on and off. But he's still only sitting on just the, the Arden Sensor and the Sidestone. Oh, and it's actually Faker's ultimate pushing Hansama out of the jump. That actually saved Faker. It stops the one auto attack that would have come off, that would have actually killed him. But again, they're looking for Faker. Oh, can't do it twice in a row, can you? Yes, you can if your Faker stays alive. And he is drawing so much pressure, it's actually allowing SKT to reposition for these fights. Still very low. They lose Wolf just on the bottom side of the map in the blink of an eye. And this means Bang has no support now. Misfits can go super aggressive, push in. They should be looking to force on these turrets if they can, to knock down an inhibitor if they can, but they are pulling back for now. Faker is going to clear out the wave. We have Baron spawning in a minute. Eldred coming very soon as well. Two huge objectives here for Misfits to secure them and try and use them to close out this game here. They don't want to keep going longer and longer into the late game. Let's see what happened here. Well, there is a very oh. squishy Lulu who walks around the corner and Ignar kills him. Righteous glory just getting him in there so quickly in the shockwave from PoE securing the kill. But again, we still don't have a Mikhail's or anything because there's been no gold income for Wolf. A very interesting choice here from Hansama. He actually bought up the Last Whisper, decides he doesn't want that. He goes with the QSS instead, selling that. Even though there is a Randwins on blank, he's prioritizing that cleanse, prioritizing the playmaking, and perhaps some of the safety he gets him. But there's really not a lot of CC besides something like a Polymorph coming out of the Lulu. Oh, they want to kill Huni in the bottom lane here. Well, he may be caught out, but SKT is moving over. He pees away. So they get a teleport, and Baron had just spawned. This is very good for Misfits, because it means Huni can't sit in the bottom lane anymore and apply pressure. He needs to join his team, and now Misfits can still look for a 5-on-5 five five team fight. 
Hansama wavering a little bit. Hansama looking to make it even more, though. Just three shots puts Huni back, and SKT is onto the Baron. Blocked out by the Weaver's Wall. So risky for SKT. Over. Gets the Cataclysm down. Maxor just on the end. Gets it! Oh. Maxor! Misfits get Baron! Bangs low! Blake is going down! Hansama He no. goes down in the fight, and that is going to be Hansama's damage away. They focus on blank and now Ignar's looking for Faker. Wolf has to peel off to the left and Misfits come up huge. Huni gets the kill to keep them alive but Ignar is looking for Faker. They could get him down here. There are the wards. Faker only has a little bit of mana left. They're gonna say how far you take that first bit of damage. Flag and drag back in. No way the king on to one and Faker goes down. Not even Faker can defend SKT in this game here. Two barons now for Misfits. Massive steal from Max Law after SKT tried to rush down the objective, used the Talia wall to deny Mr. from getting close enough, but just didn't have the damage to burst it fast, and then Max Law can actually get in the pit. The, the biggest difference from all of these Barons is SKT stayed with the only one where the other team comes in. Misfits peeled off of everyone. They never wanted to give SKT that chance, and Max Lore took his opportunity. He certainly did, and it always feels like those are the plays where these LCK teams turn it around. The 50-50s never feel like an even fight against these teams, but Max Lore is the hero. He takes it down, and now they are looking to set up a pick around this Elder Dragon. They want Hansama to be back. He will be there, and SKT will not have Faker, their strongest member in the game. 11 seconds left on him, another 20 or so to get to this Elder Drake, but it's not gonna happen. Three stacked up for Misfits. They get the Elder 37 minutes in and are looking great. And this is the Elder and the Baron. This is the death push. You will not get stronger than this for the Misfits. Now it comes down to execution. Can you make these buffs count? Can you pull this off against the greatest team we have ever seen? And the five players who's never gone to Worlds before Take a 2-1 lead over SKT in this best of five. Faker once again trying to delay the push from Misfits with the wall here on Talia. The side lanes, though, are going to be pushing for Misfits. They have prepped their waves. They have done their due diligence. They have vision. They have the items. They have the buffs. And they have the capability to put this to a match point. And the story of Misfits was that early game, but where's the closing? How do they get into the base? They have seemed to completely erase that from oh, their history, right. and they are getting in Look when they the want, go. how they want, and taking what they want. 38 minutes into the game, the inhibitors break again for SKT's base, but Misfits is still back and forth, yo-yoing the aggression into defense and getting what they want. Still not killing it yet here. Blank is trying to be a threat. Constantly telling Hansama that if he steps too close, then the body slam flash can happen. There is QSS though on Hansama to stay alive. He can go forward and kill this in here. He just waits for the rapid fire auto there. Very right. patient play. Now down to the bot lane. Both side lanes still pushing for Misfits. SKT has had no time to answer this, and we saw how fast the turrets do go down with the Mountain Dragon, with the Elder Dragon buff, and this super buffed up Hansama. We have another minute on this Baron buff here. Three cannons in this wave for them. Faker trying to once again defend. SKT needs to force a fight. I don't think that you can allow Hansama to keep sieging you out like this. Nice play there from Huni though, killing two of the cannons straight away. Hansama gets the tower. Get the ball as well, could get the jump forward, but they play it safe. This time he holds the rocket jump for safety as they're onto the inhibitor. Everything is about protecting Hansama or being in front with Ignar. Look at this incredible play though. The perfect timing on the waves coming in. They have another minion wave up there on the top side. Nice wall from Faker denies it, but Hansama just used his rocket jump, so he needs to be careful. Yeah. Wait for his team. Shock blast coming through from Huni, only tickling Misfits now. He's not finding big AoE damage, which usually means he has to go hammer form quick, and you do not want to do that against this team. It looks like Misfits will hold off, will wait for those waves. They're going to be pouring into the bottom soon and in that mid lane. Look at Bang right near. He sees two members split up. Oh, Blank as well. The constant yes, trying to find. That was the flash and the ultimate from Blank. Misfits now should have the confidence. They can push up, but Power of Evil without his flash as well. Hansama, it's on him. Faker! Faker, Faker low. Faker shot wave in. A few more shots to him. He's going to have about He's 500 there. HP. Bachelor takes him down. Wolf is very low as Blank falls. The map is open. The base this is should being be crushed by uh, Misfits. SKT very low right Here now. Goes Wolf Hansama. looks to make his way out. Bang has the hang up out him. Misfits are going to be able to take the Nexus turrets. Get the in for now. Bang did stay alive in this fight here. 
three in hips gone. Misfit still in the base. It's currently the three members against the two, and Alfire will TP in. This is that part where Hooney has to go to hammer form. It only gets more dangerous for him. The teleport coming in so the minions stay alive. That super minion, in fact. And they are going for Hooney now, looking for the kills, looking to secure it, looking to be the first team ever to accomplish what no team has done before as they take SKT to game point. Can you believe it, man? They pick Leona in this game. They win the bot lane. They keep creating picks. They get two Barons in this game as well. They get all the Drakes, and SKT are pushed so far back on the map, they don't have an answer at the moment. It's just unreal. SKT being pushed to their limit and beyond. Now one game from being eliminated by the third seed from Europe, second seed. And they're creating their own little meta here doing worlds. They're not playing the same style everyone else is playing. They're not just saying, yeah, let's go to 50 minutes with a Lulu and a Janna on each side and then see which AD carry is the best. They are completely changing it up. Again, I guarantee you, Ignar has more picks ready. There is still, we haven't seen the Thresh yet, there's still a Bard for him to play as well. It's not just Leona, it's not just Blitzcrank, it's just Ignar as the player forcing SKT back. Exactly, and he's having the series of a lifetime. This guy has been unstoppable, and he's got to be putting the fear now into SKT. Are they going to be able to play confidently? Are they going to be able to execute on the game plans that they have when Ignar could always be there lurking? Exactly, and then Ignar gets... So many kills for his AD carry, who's actually playing so confident. Hans is 18 years old, and right now on the big stage, he's in the front line, pushing Misfits forward. Nine and nine that game, participating. Nine, three, nine, participating in 18 kills. Absolutely crazy for Misfits across the map. And to hear more about the Misfits, that to hear about how Misfits brought their series versus SKT to match point. Let's nice prediction, the analyst guys. Desk. <laughs> that's about the how I show is screaming 3-0 right, yeah, backstage the whole know what that's about, Come on, Riv, man. Riv, I feel you. I am almost at a loss for words. I'm hoping you guys aren't because Misfits right now is taking it to the reigning champs. 2-1, we're going to match point, and they do it with Fervor Leona. It's amazing. This is, it's unprecedented as well, but everything is unprecedented until it happens for the first time. Fervor Leona against SKT. Having Faker and Bang look tilted in a series at Worlds, SKT has won every single series they have ever played at Worlds in their three World Championship runs. Another one win from losing, one loss from losing. Yeah, you've never Misfits. said SKT's one loss I don't, away the from words them. Don't work. The words are getting yeah. all mixed up in your brain. I see it. Frost, what are you thinking here? But it's about understanding why it is so important. Mm -hmm. Ignar, Ignar going off is, is what is turning the tides of these games. And it's because Bang and Wolf are a problem. Like, Kid Gloves come off. They have not performed well this entire tournament. And it was a question, is it because of the drafts? We have a lot of Twitch. It's expected that he'll lose lane. Even now, they continue to put themselves in really wonky situations, taking the vein in this instance. Or even when they have a quote-unquote winning matchup or a better matchup, they're still falling backwards. They're still slipping down. I see down. you, Papa. Talk oh, I got to get in there some point. <laughs> what I really like here, specifically from Misfits, is you think back to what we said, these kind of boiler point points about basically, hey, what does SKT do? And we talk about how they adapt to the tournament meta. Mm -hmm. They have never really been tournament innovators. They are always sit back and wait, see what's good. They didn't see Leona anywhere on this tier list. They didn't see the <laughs> Ivan jungle coming how in. Far Remember to what I said, you asked me about Blank coming in. Blank comes in, he's been able to read pathing. Guess who doesn't have the same pathing as any other jungler? It's the Ivan. And even though Ivan was sitting around level four, there was no cheat sheet to what path he would take. He has the most flexible of paths. So there's all the adaptation thrown in. And then I want to look at SKT and I want to roast them a little bit because roast some of away. the itemization choices here, a tier Jace, when your team is getting crushed on the bot side, going for Rage Blade when you lost the turret. Basically, he was sitting on a blasting one for about six minutes of this game. There are no AP scalings on the vein, to be clear. SK Telecom are drafting weird stuff. First vein game in two yeah. years from Bang. A pick for him when Easy Hoon was their mid laner. That was a long damn time ago. The items are not there. The players are desynced. Faker tried his damnedest this game, but everything's coming across, coming apart, and it's all across the rift. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do with how Misfits is changing the playing field that SKT is used to, right? The vein comes out in response, I think, more to the Jarvan, because you're thinking you want the vein to counter the Jarvan. Decent and, against Leona, And the I guess. Leona pick, you're probably going to be able to dodge some of the skill shots, but then it's all falling apart, and Misfits is the ones that are comfortable in this. We talked last game about early game priority, and that's going to matter. And we saw the draft, and we said, you know, 
SKT probably has pushing lanes here. But then they have the Fervely owner. Like, Misfits is doing that one more step of extra prep to turn this game around so they can win the early lane right? and get control. You, you talk about changing the playing field, and I guarantee you Bang & Wolf have not played on this field. Before. And I guarantee they did not respect Fervely owner. They're taking aggressive trades, thinking that, hey, we have the Q, we have summoners up, we're going to be able to win the trades. They don't have heal barrier in this particular exchange. It continues to go, and they get Han Samalo. Watch the auto attacks doing about 90 damage. Those but it's doing, yeah. full stacked fervor on a melee champion. It stacks up so fast. And again, it's the absolute fearlessness from Han Sama and Ignar. They don't care that they're looking down the barrel of Bang and Wolf. They're going to go all in. Mm -hmm. They're going to make it count. But not just the crazy pick and what that does and the surprising damage. Flash for the Relic Shield, heal there yeah. out of Leona to stay alive, not trading one for two in that situation, making it the 2-0 and pushing themselves even further ahead in that lane. Yeah, and Dash, I've talked to a lot of teams that are faced with playing the Korean behemoth in the bracket stage, and so many teams are defeated before the game starts because they scrim against them, they say we've beaten them twice in 20 games, they never lose best of fives, and then they it goes one of two ways. They either go into the game already defeated and suck, or they go into the game and just play crazy and make all these really silly plays and overextend in these dumb places. But what Misfits has managed to do is harness that energy where they're playing the aggressive style that worked for them when they have been successful so far in this world, but not overdoing it against SKT, and they're treating them like mortals and showing that they are. We've heard the words out of Max Lore's mouth, right? You have to look at the game and enter it with the, you know, with the mentality of being a winner. Well, the rest of the team is following suit. Ignar showing up big for the team today on yet another pick. And I would argue they're overdoing it a little bit. We saw game two, but if you put yourself in these positions where you pick smartly, where you play smartly, where you make the right rotations, you get the Leona out of lane, it was basically the same as a Blitzcrank, you can make some mistakes. And if you have the mental fortitude, and this team, unlike most Western teams, is happy to make mistakes in draft in game one, in game in game two, shake them off. And I think you have to look to the support staff as well. We already, mm -hmm. of course, have complimented Hussein Muzvi on his very inventive drafts. Getting this team to a point where they can play with reckless abandon regardless of situation. This is the ultimate situation to feel kind of that lingering doubt. Eight and oh, never lost in a best of five at SK Telecom since 2013. 2015. 2013, including that world's back there, it's eight and oh. So it's insane to sit, consider we're here. And now, if you tried to make us do predictions again, I'd love to hear what we'd have to say. I just have to say that the adaptation has been shown, or excuse me, the strategy has been shown. Yes, we've seen these weird picks like the Blitzcrank into the Leona, but the same concept is applying. It's hard pushing, getting that bot lane tower down. There's no way that SKT make this mistake three times in a row and don't draft a hard pushing, winning bot lane. And, and we do to a degree see elements of that defensive team from S that SKT is so good at being, right? In, in that throughout that game, we kept looking over each other. Is 4K gold lead enough? Is 6K gold lead enough? They're gonna need to secure the Baron in order to put this game away. They do make that aggressive call for the Baron over the back end. They make sure yeah. they secure it and it helps them close it out. Yeah, I mean, just thinking about this play, Misfits made that good call to go back to the Baron again and again with the Ivern. And this fight was super close. And here's some over-aggression by Bang flashing back into the fight. So he's hit by the Shockwave, prevents SKT from being able to turn this one around because Misfits, once again, was ready to, to hit back. And it's just planting their feet. The fact that they attempted that Baron, I think, three or four different times, understood exactly what their win condition was and forced it, knowing that the Tristana had the superior items, that they had to force the fight, that they would win it. So now we find ourselves in a situation that we've very rarely been in, where SKT is one game away from losing a best of five. Only one other team has beaten them in a best of five. That's EDG back at MSI. Yeah. So with it being game point, and, uh, Misfits rather back to blue side. No subs coming in for this fourth game. What's the answer? All aboard the European hype train? The answer for SKT is to make sure they can get a winning bottom lane. Picking the vein was a mistake for them there. But in the larger scope of things, SKT has been pushed to the limit before. You just didn't expect it to happen out of this Misfits team. And I want to see 
the mental strength from SKT, because a lot of us are saying that SKT actually look a little tilted in the plays they're making. Banks, item builds, Faker's positioning in game two. They have to refine that focus and calm that made them godlike in the first place. And if they don't do it, then this team was not the SKT that would be world champion. They had the option to draft a first round Caitlyn, go for a very safe laner. They went for the Jace instead. It's kind of doubling down on the one member, Huni, who we're not really talking about so far. He's had a good series, even if Untara was here in a theoretical world. I think you would stick with Huni. I think you can give him the benefit of the doubt, roll the dice a little bit with his pick, take a Jace ban, and get that Caitlyn, get something safe, because rolling the dice is not working for SK Telecom, and it's hitting Blackjack, it's hitting everything for the side of Misfits. Well, I can't believe I'm saying it, but Misfits are one win away from taking down the reigning world champions. You won't want to miss the upcoming Game 4, so do not go anywhere. One more shot as Wolf wants the glitter lands. Bang on the way back. Barrier comes in. Oh, they got blood onto Bang. Fight in the jungle still. Here it comes out again. again. Wolf's going down. One, two, two kills in the bot lane as Misfits pull the trigger. Goody still no flash. Nice ultimate. Solar flare into the Zenith lane. Daybreak locked down, and that's Hot Sama coming up with another kill. I'm TPing. Look, 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 Jace, Jace. Oh, baby! Nice! nice. Maxlor just on the edge. Gets it! Oh, oh, Maxlor! Misfits get buried! Now, looking for the kills, looking to secure it, looking to be the first team ever to accomplish what no team has done before as they take SKT to game point. 